On Tuesday night, Holland Christian bid adieu to the Holland Civic Center. The old barn is about to get a facelift, so this was the Maroons' last game in the Lakeshore Landmark. There have been a lot of memorable moments at the Civic Center, but one stands out, and they tried to recreate it on Tuesday. First, let's set the table and show you the magic that happened back in February of 2000. The shot heard round West Michigan. Three-pointers. It was the highlight of their season. The fans stormed the court. The players celebrated like they just won the state championship. I never thought I'd see it out of my cup. <laughs> Not exactly the type of scene you'd expect after a 12-point loss. To make the final score 60 to 48. You get caught up in uh, wins and losses uh, a whole lot as a coach and as a community. And when something like this happens, it just changes a whole lot of your perspective. And what happened revolves around Richard Nagelkirk. Richard never figured to be a star. He wasn't blessed with the physical skills to make him one. But his passion for sports runs deep. So for four years, he worked as a student manager, serving the athletes that made the headlines at Holland Christian. Go, go to, go. Anything to be a part of the team. He's got a servant's heart and servant spirit. So whatever he can do to, to help, to be involved, he'll just go out there and do it. He's helped with the girls basketball program. He helps with the, the baseball team. He's gonna uh, time soccer tomorrow night. Uh, it's just his life. A life that changed dramatically on a Saturday night in February. Like every game night, Richard was there for his team, doing the duties managers do. Only this time, at the request of his coach, Mike Phelps, he wore sweats instead of the standard shirt and tie. And underneath the sweats, for the first time in his life, he donned a Holland Christian uniform. We had a discussion Friday before the game even, mm -hmm. and he said if we were done by 10 or up by 10, he'd put me in the game. Mm -hmm. There's a minute left in the game. He'd always hoped there would be a special highlight for Richard. Uh, we just didn't know what it was gonna be. True to his word, Phelps called Richard from the end of the bench, a reward for four loyal years of service. <laughs> and as the sellout crowd at Holland Civic Center picked up on what was happening, the mood began to change. It will no longer be quiet when the fans realize <laughs> what the coach has done. Suddenly, nobody cared that the Maroons trailed by 15 points. Before I went in, he told me to get open. So they, they, so he passed me the ball. And I talked with the other four kids that I was going to put in, and I just said, OK, look, we're going to try to get him a shot, uh, set some picks, uh, get some movement, and uh, just do the best you can. And you know, there were a couple kids on in the bench that they hadn't played a lot either and uh, hadn't got into many games, but they did their best to get him open and give him shots. I think that if they pass me, I'm going to shoot it up. Hands it to Nagel Kirk. Nagel Kirk, a couple of dribbles. Gets it to Doctor. When he touched it the first time, I thought, great. He got a chance to touch the basketball. I was thrilled that that happened. Hilton cross court for Nagelkirk. He'll fire it up no good. Then he got to touch it again. He actually got a shot off that partially blocked. And, and I was just, just so happy for that. If the game would have stopped here, Holland Christian fans would have gone home happy. The smile on Richard's face took the sting out of the loss. But there was still time on the clock. Time for Richard to get off one more shot. Time for a miracle. Picked off by Josh Walters. Country Day turnover number 15 with nine seconds left. Walters into the front court. Moves the right hand dribble. Into the corner. Nagel Kirk. He'll fire get it in. up for a three. And he makes the three. I just couldn't contain myself. Dennis Nagel Kirk was shooting his son's every move from the stands using a camera he borrowed from a friend. When Richard's shot hit nothing but net, he did the same thing everybody else did. I went nuts, and then I, then I realized, like, oh, man, I got to get the camera back on this, and I just had the tears just streaming down my face. He wasn't the only one. As Richard's teammates carried him off the court on their shoulders, his mother dried her eyes just enough to get this unforgettable snapshot, his shining moment frozen in time. And the way they picked him up, it all made sense to me. The stories he told and about how nice the guys were. 
and it was so honest and it just came from a gut reaction and you could tell they were just just all so happy for him it was really indescribable that as a parent to see your child enjoy that moment and, and be a part of that where for so many years he had never had an opportunity like that to be you know on a team like that or be on the basketball court or be the star or anything like that it was just extremely special for us. While the Nagel Kirks have enjoyed their son's 15 minutes of fame, they have embraced what has followed. As word of the shot spread, the videotape became a hot item. Dennis estimates he's made between 20 and 25 copies, most going to local churches. Pastor Paul Hans used it in a recent sermon at Central Wesleyan Church. It shows what can happen when a person gets involved in the game of life and just goes for it, whether they think they've got the gifts, the skills, or the abilities or not. It has really gone places we didn't expect it to go, and people have been able to use it to touch other people and um, to show how God still works miracles. This is one miracle they'll talk about long after the seats have emptied. The echoes of this shot will be heard for years to come. And Richard Nagelkirk, the team manager, gets a storybook three-pointer. The lessons will live a lifetime. Some loss. That was the greatest loss they've ever experienced. Obviously, God had a big hand in this because uh, this just didn't happen by itself. We didn't know what God's plan was and where he was going to take this. We were just so glad it worked for Richard. Just an incredible story. And on Tuesday night, 17 years later, at halftime of the Bruin Giants game it's North, against North Point Christian, Richard did it again. <laughs> he recreates the moment. And take a look at that. Absolutely nailed it. You know, Richard still serves the students at Holland Christian as a scorekeeper and other various jobs. Look at the reaction after he made that shot. Standing ovation from the crowd, high fives from everyone in the front row, even signed autographs. A perfect way to say goodbye to the Civic Center, don't you think? I actually, before I came out, I actually prayed in the hallway and prayed that the, the angels were touching, the, touching me and lifting up the ball to help me make, to make the shot. He's there to help uh, prepare events. He's there to help clean up. I would put it this way. Richard just loves God, and he loves serving people because he loves God. And he takes joy in that. And so that's a special thing for us. I love this place with all my, with all my heart, and it's like my, it's like my home. I'm going to miss it. It's going to be different. We don't, we don't know where we're playing next year, so it's just going to be a little bit harder. But the Lord will move, it, move us wherever we go.